Vape number two, pre-production and budgeting. Starting our shoot now, the idea concept is we basically are focused on you have $300,000 to make your first feature film. Of course, you're calling it a million dollar budget. What you're going to start now is sooner or later, you've got to start writing checks. You're in the pre-production period. you got your script. Now what you've got to do is hire your production manager or possibly line producer. And what he or she is going to do is going to line you up or I'm going to teach you yourself how to do this and get your film stock. Get your lab deal, your film lab deal. Rent your cameras. Get your dolly equipment. Get your sound equipment. Get your light and grip equipment. Find out your sound transfers, where you're going to get that and what it costs. And to get your dolly. This is the basic pre-production job of getting the equipment together. This is the job of the production manager and the line producer, either or. But you know what? You're the producer filmmaker and it's your money, so it's going to be your job. So get ready. This is what you're about to learn. Here comes pre-production and getting the basic equipment deals together. Happy filmmaking. Next subject. What we're going to do is get into our pre-production and you're gonna learn how to be production managers and get all the deals, knowing that you have $300,000 and we're gonna make a film. We don't have a penny more than 300,000. Is this a $300,000 budget? No, it's a million dollar budget. We have 300,000 cash, let's make our movie now. Let's start making our deals and doing it. Film stock, lab, camera, sound, lights, etc. We're gonna have to do. There are three stages that are taught in film schools of making a movie. There's pre-production, production, and post. I think that's bull. I think of it as five stages. Pre-pre-production, pre-production, production, post-production, post and then marketing distribution. See, right now, everybody's in pre-production. What you think is pre-production, which you are, you're, numerous, you, you're all producers with numerous projects in various stages of development, you're all in pre-production. Any of you have any money yet? No. You're really in what I consider to be pre-pre-production. Real pre-production starts when you have money and can start writing checks. That's when real production starts. And you know how long real pre-production is? Film schools teach two months to three months. I've never seen it longer than 10 days. Because when you're out there chasing the money and you finally get somebody to give you $300,000, you are so scared they're going to take it back tomorrow. You're going to spend it within a week. That is not a joke. That happens every time. So real pre-production. To get it all together, it's seven days at the most, two weeks, one to two weeks. So right now we're in real pre-production. Somebody gave us a $300,000 check. Let's get it together. Let's start getting everything. Let's get our crew. Let's get our film stock. Let's get our location. Let's get a lab deal. Let's get a camera deal. Let's get a sound deal. You know how much time you have? For each of those, for all that together, all those little deals, you got about three days. By the way, it's no big thing. I know I'm dispensing a lot of information now, and it sounds hectic, and it sounds tough. It is, it's a calm period to me. Anybody that's done one or two feature films, production manager, that's no big deal. But let's go through each one of them so you know how to do it now. So you don't have to depend on somebody. You're not going to hire these good people. Of course you hire good people. But you don't say, well, get me some good deals. The job of getting the deals and negotiating and financing is up to you. Stop passing the buck on money. They'll point you in the direction. You've got to make the deals. You've got to understand what the deals are. So let's go through in real pre-production, in the pre-pre-production first, you've got to come up with your script. Then you do packaging. After you get your script, packaging is you get your director, you get your actors together, you get your package together. Sometimes it's called get your elements together. Then you do some real budgeting, which we're about to do in budgeting. Then you do scheduling, which you'll learn a little later how to do this scheduled production board strip board. Then after you do the scheduling and the board, you storyboard. 
you hire an artist or a cartoonist or you yourself do it yourself and you storyboard out these shots and put the dialogue next to them and you really want to do it yourself. Stop thinking you got to be an artist because you know what you're going to do with the storyboard when you're doing it with your stick figures yourself? You're vicariously shooting a film shot by shot with a pencil. It's amazing how that gets your act together. There's no cheaper way than 60 pieces of paper and a pencil to shoot your film. That's what storyboarding is. If you don't want to storyboard, you don't want to direct. That's it. You, direct, you want to direct? You storyboard. You don't hire an artist. <coughs> you do it yourself. You'll be amazed at what you learn. Storyboarding is just shooting the film with a pencil. We'll get to that later on. Then you got to do your casting, your scouting, your locations. There's a lot of paperwork. And about a week before, you bring the actors together and you do your rehearsing and you learn blocking. All this we're going to get into details later on. But you got to start writing some checks now. Here's the first check. What we're going to be doing, the most important thing, is take out your updated workbook and turn to page 37. On page 37, you're going to have the front page of a generic budget. You're going to see 41 numbers there. What we're going to start talking about now is the below-the-line numbers, which starts with number 5 going down to number 26. Right now, the subject below the line, and the subject is budgeting. And in independent filmmaking and low-budget filmmaking, the subject, we really don't call it budgeting. We call it reverse budgeting. Because the truth, you know how much money you have to make your film. On the example we're talking about today, we have $300,000. So it's sort of dumb for us to pick up and do a budget, and we come up with a budget that says we need $480,000, and you go, I can't make the film. The answer is, you know, up front you have $300,000, and we're going to be doing reverse budgeting, which means we've got to learn how to squeeze those 38 steps or 38 checks in the top sheet of a budget form into $300,000 and get down to check number 38 or step 38, the answer print within the $300,000. So for the rest of today and the rest of the tapes while making the film, we're going to continually be going back to page 37 in our handout. But before page 37, let's look at a real budget, which is on pages 38 to 66. That is about a 30-page budget. You can buy these budgets from either Enterprise Stationers, Hollywood Film Institute, Samuel French Bookstore. There's no standard budget form. There are some that are 10 pages, 20 pages, 40 pages, 60 pages. In the handout, on pages 38 to 66, we have a filled-in budget. You'll see on page 38, which is the first sheet, the standard common thing between all budget packages, be they 10, 20, 30, 40 pages, is they all have the first page, which is technically called the one sheet, the top sheet, the front sheet, or the cover sheet. That's page 38 filled in. What we're going to do for the rest of today and the rest of the tapes is fill in page 37, a top sheet of a budget for $300,000 cash, which is what we have to make our first film. Now let's turn to page 34, though, preliminary, and let's take a look at the first top sheet I ever did when I got hired for a professional film. I got hired by a man, Mr. Roger Corman, who is sort of called the king of bees and shoots a lot of low-budget films. He asked me what I'd like to be a line producer on a feature film and told me we're going to shoot a feature film in about a week. There's $100,000 and 40,000 feet of film stock. Can I do it? I, of course, said yes, and he quickly slid a piece of paper to me with a magic mark and said, how am I going to spend the money? So now let's turn to page 34 and look what I wrote up for Mr. Corman in two minutes. If you look at the numbers, you'll see I quickly scratched them out, and I actually added them up wrong and went over budget. But the point is Mr. Corman saw that within two minutes, I knew how to spend money to make a film, and he hired me to shoot his feature film. That's page 34. So if if you're thinking about doing your first feature film, let's turn to page 35 now, the top sheet of a budget. And on page 35, you'll see I've already filled in the top sheet, not the complete budget, just the top sheet for a $100,000 budget. So if you think you're going to shoot a feature film for $100,000, the budget's done. It's page 35. You don't want to do a $100,000 budget. You want to do a $200,000 budget. Then it's on page 36. Look at that. There's a $200,000 budget already filled in on page 36.
But what we're going to do for the rest of today and the other five or six remaining tapes to explain how to make the film, we're going to turn to page 37, which is a generic blank top sheet that I filled in for this series of cassettes in the seminar so that you at home can follow along with us as we spend the arbitrary $300,000 that we have to make our feature film. What we're going to start doing is filling in the numbers on page 37, step by step, number by number. We're slowly going to start with the first number below the line, and that first number, the most important thing to filmmakers, is film stock. So let's turn to page 37, and we're going to start on number 5, film stock. Film stock, though, in your updated workbook is on pages 67 and 68. So let's turn to page 67 and 68 and look at the details of film stock on those two pages. Filmmakers? Stock. We're going to make a feature film. The end product, if you want to be in movie theaters, is you must be 35 millimeter. 35 millimeter. You want to be in a movie theater? 35 millimeter. There are three ways to get there. A, shoot and tape. And then the magic phrase is transfer it to 35 millimeter to be in a movie theater. B, we can shoot in film stock, but a lower scale, 16 or super 16, and transfer it to 35. Or C, we start off right away buying 35 millimeter. Here are the pros and cons of each of these three. Number one, shoot in tape. There is so much literature and so much hype being put out there by the electronic industry, and especially with this HDTV stuff, a shoot in tape transfer it to film, it looks good, it looks good. You know what, if that's all you can afford is shoot in tape and transfer it to film, you have that equipment, go ahead and do it. But don't think it looks like film. I like tape and I like film. They look different. Tape looks like tape and film looks like film. And when you turn the TV set on and you look at a show, you know and everybody knows if it's tape or it's film. Tape has that live stage look to it, and film has whatever that is. Cinematographers love to use this weird word, the surreal. It has a surreal look. I don't even know what surreal means. I looked it up in every dictionary. I don't even understand the definition. But I know when I see anything on TV, tape looks like tape and film looks like film, and everybody knows the difference. Don't get sold on it. You're making a feature film. Nobody says, I'm going to the movies tonight to see a feature tape. <laughs> but you know what? If all the money you have is that's all you can afford, do it in tape. And transfer it to film. It'll be in movie theaters if it's unique and good enough. But everybody knows it ain't film. But you got it done. So I'm not negative on it. I'm just trying to get you real of don't think this is the way to do it. Unless you have very, very, very little money. Next is the only way to make film look like film, guys, is to buy film and shoot and process on film. You can edit on tape, but you got to shoot on film. To make film look like film, buy film. There are two formats you can purchase. The inexpensive smaller film, which is 16 millimeter. You can shoot in 16 millimeter, buy 16 millimeter, rent a 16 millimeter camera. And then the magic phrase, though, to be in a movie theater, you gotta, the phrase is blow it up to 35 millimeter. So you can shoot 16, blow it up to 35. And most beginners thinking they have little money think they should shoot in 16 millimeter and blow it up to 35. And they're gonna save a whole lot of money. You'll save, here's what you really save. You'll save seven to $9,000 buying film stock. You'll save three to $5,000 renting the camera package. You'll save six to $10,000 at the lab. So you're going to save twenty dollars to $24,000, and you'll work harder, which you don't understand. And when you're finished, you've got a 16-millimeter film that can't play in any movie theater in the world. It's okay for television and video, but not the movie theater industry. So now you've got to blow it up to thirty-five. You think this is free? The labs charge you minimum twenty-five dollars to $35,000. So the money you save, now it costs you to blow it up to 35. You've worked harder, and when you blow it up, you'll lose a little bit of quality. So it's a dumb decision, unless your budget is about $120,000 in cash or lower. We'll get to that later today. So shooting 16. <coughs> don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, unless you have under 120,000. Anything over than 120,000, you're 35 millimeter. Next, here's a simple question. Has anybody here ever heard of anybody starting their career 
and shooting a movie that's been in movie theaters that they did it in 16 millimeter and blew it up to 35. Wait, trick question. And then did it a second time. There are a bunch of people that have shot movies, 16 millimeter, brought it up to 35, started their career. But you know what they all say when they're on panels? And somebody asked them in the audience, well, what have you learned? Oh, well, now our next shoot's going to be definitely, now that we know it, we're going to be 35. So I'm saving you that. Don't do it. It's what they learned. 35, what you've got to do is you have a mystique that 35 millimeter is so difficult to work with and then you should first practice on 16 millimeter, get the act together, and then you can handle 35. Wrong. 35 millimeter is easier to use than 16. Start on 35, then you'll be able to handle 16 millimeter. Film schools only teach on 16 millimeter because they can't afford 35 millimeter equipment. And 35 millimeter equipment is not expensive to rent. We'll get there in a second. So basically, we're going to shoot 35 millimeter. You're going to buy 35 millimeter film stock. So let's buy 35 millimeter film stock. Let's get into how much we need. How much we need is based on how long the film is going to be. That's a phrase called running time. Running time, a feature film, running time. All movies, here's a magic number, first sort of numbers coming out. All movies are 90 to 120 minutes long. Not shorter than 90, not more than 120. That's running time. Can anybody here name a movie they're going to go see tonight and know the running time? You never know. You just sort of go. If it was less than 90, it's too short. There's, you know, if it's more than 120, you know, it's sort of long. There are some movies that are more than 120. Don't think you're going to make one. You're not going to make a Gettysburg. You're not going to do your Malcolm X. You're not going to do your Chaplin. Those movies get made. Don't sharpshoot me and say that there are some movies that are longer than 120 or 120 minutes in running time. Yes, they are. Once you get to be a famous celebrity, big name filmmaker, you can do what you want. Right now, you're not, and it's going to take you about five or six films to become a Spike Lee that gets up to that category. So don't cop any attitudes that you're going to make something more than two hours. You're 90 to 120 minutes in running time. So the subject is film stock. So all movies running time are 90 to 120 minutes long. We're shooting 35 millimeter. The projector runs at a speed, 35 millimeter projector runs at a speed of 90 feet per minute. So a 90-minute movie, which is a movie, is basically 8,100 feet of film stock. A 120-minute movie, a two-hour movie, is 10,800 feet of film stock. So our final film, if it's 90 minutes, is 8,100 feet of film stock. Got to buy it. Or 10,800 feet of film stock. Got to buy it. Here's a new phrase. But we're going to buy more film stock than we end up with. That's basically technically is called shooting ratio. What's your budget at a prescribed shooting ratio? In the low budget genre world, your shooting ratios are going to be between 5 to 1 to 7 to 1. That's the Corman industry. 5 to 1 to 7 to 1 is a low shooting ratio, but doable. That's what you're going to have to execute with your first project. Let's pick the average a 6 to 1 shooting ratio. If you're going to be a 90-minute movie with a prescribed budgeted 6 to 1 shooting ratio, if the final print is 8,100 feet, we're going to start by buying 6 times 8,100 feet or 48,600 feet, rounded off to 50,000 feet. You are going to start your film by going out and purchasing approximately 50,000 feet of 35-millimeter film stock. 50,000 feet. Now here's where you buy the 50,000 feet. That's assuming a 90 minute movie at a 6 to 1 shooting ratio. If it was a 2 hour movie at a 10 to 1 shooting ratio, that would be 10,800 feet times 10. So it would be about 110,000 feet. But you find out what's your running time. Projected running time is by how long is the script. 90 page script, one page of script typed properly equals one minute of running time. So 90 page script, 90 minutes. If you're budgeting for a 6 to 1 shooting ratio, 50,000 feet. Shoot. Why are you going with a 6 to 1 ratio? Because that's all you can afford for $300,000. We've done it too many times. Okay. 
or the truth is 150,000, that's all you can afford. If you said 150,000, six to one, if, stop. If you're saying 300,000, that's our budget, I could get away with a 10 to one. I could, we can afford a 10 to one. Why? We've done it too many times. Ain't got any more money because we got to pay these other numbers here. That, that's why. There's no law. It's just we've done it too many times to know. To max out production value, we can only allocate X dollars to each area. Right. That's it. Six takes. Not sure. six takes. Six to one is not six takes. You don't understand that. That's this afternoon when I teach how to direct. Six to one is maybe one take. Master shot. One take. Medium shot. One take. Close up. One take. POV shot. One take. Six different angles. Or if you want to try six takes on your master shot, you have no more film stock to get a medium shot. That's, let me get to that later, shoot. You had a question? Let's go, moving on. So buying film stock, the 50,000 feet. I'm gonna teach you how to buy from the white market, the gray market, and the black market. White market, gray market, and black market. The white market, buying directly from the manufacturer. The manufacturers, we have three manufacturers, Kodak, Fuji, and Agva. So turn to page in your updated workbook, page 67. 67, and you'll see the phone numbers for Kodak, Fuji, and Agva, and other information. Has two types of 35 millimeter stock and two types of 16. Even though they give you a lot of technical, weird number jargon to try and confuse you. What their film stock is, is generically called either high speed or regular speed. When you get all the literature from them, you won't have any of that. But when you ask them, what's your high speed stock, they'll know what you're talking about. When you ask, what's the regular speed, they'll know what you're talking about. Here's what high speed 35 millimeter stock is. When you go to the speed rating, the speed, you look for the number, the technical number, which is called the ASA. What's the ASA? High ASA, high speed stock, is 250 to 500 ASA. Medium speed stock is about 120 to 200 ASA, and low speed or slow speed stock is anything under 100 ASA. High speed film stock means when you expose the film stock to actors and light, it catches the image quicker. High speed. You being low budget, shooting in rooms like this, an available room, somebody's house, and not having a lot of lights will probably go high speed oriented. High speed, high speed. So you'll be getting a little bit more high speed stock. When you read your script, all interior day, right now we're interior day, but the room is dark, all interior day, interior night, and exterior night pages, you purchase high speed for. All exterior day, which you assume is sunny, you purchase regular speed stock for. So you, every script is different. You read the script, find the percentage relationship, and now let's buy high speed or regular speed. Every manufacturer has it. Kodak calls their high speed 52, 94, 95, 96, 97. Regular speed 52, 47, 52, 48. Fuji has high speed 85, 14, and 85, 11, et cetera, et cetera. Those numbers don't mean anything. They're there to confuse you. What means anything is what's the ASA rating? So now we're gonna buy 50,000 feet of 35 millimeter, a percentage high speed, interior and night, and a percentage regular speed exterior day. Now let's find out what this stuff costs. Go to page 67, page 67. You'll see the column on the left, width, Agva, Kodak, Fuji. Now we're gonna compare the three. The next column length, you buy film stock in 400 footers and 1,000 footers. You buy 400 footers when your cameraman is projecting doing handheld shots. You just want to make the camera lighter for him or her to handle. So then you buy 400 footers for those days of those shots. The ASA is the speed rating. The stock number column, just X those numbers out. That's the manufacturer trying to confuse you. Now it's price per roll. You see the most expensive film stock in the history of filmmaking, Kodak, three from the bottom, 35 millimeter, it's $376.20 a roll. These prices are about a year and a half old. It is now about $420 a roll. $420 for a 1,000 footer, here is how you negotiate with these companies. You don't pay retail. The only person in the film industry that ever pays retail is you, the beginning filmmaker. <laughs> so I'm trying to get you away from thinking you're gonna ever pay retail. Anytime you see it in print, don't pay it. 
never pay it. Only first timers pay it. And they always say, we'll give you a 10% discount. That's a joke. We get 30 to 40% discounts. We do. You might as well get them too. Your money's as good as our money. So here's how you get the discounts. Let's say Kodak, most expensive here. Let's say it's 40, 42 cents a foot or $400 or $420 for a thousand foot roll. 40 cents a foot. You want to get a deal. This is the white market. The white market is buying directly from the manufacturer, Kodak, Fuji, and Agva. Three companies that hate each other and compete with each other, and all three of their products are wonderful. So you go into Kodak. You know how you get a deal from Kodak? He asks Kodak, well, I'm shooting 50,000 feet. How much does the film stock cost? And he says that. And then the salesman you talk to, you go, oh, well, that's a little too expensive for me. I guess I'll have to buy Fuji. <laughs> it's amazing. They'll, you'll get 30% off. You know how you get a discount from Kodak? Don't say you're a student. They don't care. Don't say, you know, I qualify for the IFP 10% discount or this film school discount. They don't care. All that's bunk. You just say, what's the price? Oh, I can't afford it. I'm buying Fuji. They won't let you out of the office. What can you afford? We'll work with you. They like that phrase. We'll work with you. We cut deals. Those are the two phrases you'll hear. So literally what I found out by doing it so many times is I'll get 30% off. So from Kodak, get off 30%. You know how you get a deal from Fuji? Say Agva. Okay? Take these prices, knock off 30%. That's what it is. So if it's 40 cents a foot and we're buying 50,000 feet, that's $20,000. But we're going to get a 30% discount. So let's say film stock buying 15, 50,000 feet at a 30% discount. 50,000 feet at a 30% discount will be about $15,000, about 30 cents a foot, buying directly from the white market. Here's another way to go. Never mind directly from the manufacturer, go to the gray market, the secondary market. This is totally legal. There are two companies right around the corner from this lab that we're sitting in. Studio Film and Tape is one company. Studio Film and Tape is one company. Another company is Steady. Systems, S T E A D I hyphen S Y S T E M S. They buy and sell leftover unused film stock from other manufacturers, from Kodak, Fuji, and Agvin, sell it to you. It's brand new, unused, unopened. They get it at a 30% discount. So studio film and tape and steady systems are always there. They're both around the corner. You don't have to, this is not illegal. This is where all the low budget independents get their film stock from and they have tape stock from them. Those two companies, they're automatically 30% less. They'll never give you prices. It's always priced as quoted. 30% so less, so you're 30% from Kodak? Uh, no, it'll be about 10% less than the 30% from Kodak but it's automatically right at that 30% less price if you don't even want to play with the let's haggle from Kodak and you'll buy Kodak stock from them or Fuji stock from them or Agfa stock from them. So those companies you know they exist. Now they also work in and they sell things that are called cool that you got to understand recans and ends. You got to understand what recans and ends are. Recans and ends. When I buy a thousand foot can or when we're shooting a feature film, we buy 50,000 feet, more than likely what we're going to be for the rest of today is a three-week shoot, 18 shooting days. Three-week shoot, 18 shooting days, buying 50,000 feet of film stock using 3,000 feet a day. So let's say every day you're going to have 3,000 feet exposed in the camera, but you know what? We have four or 7,000 feet there. We'll always have one magazine loaded and two or three extra magazines loaded with different speeds. If the lighting situation changes, we can slap one up very quickly, change magazines very quickly. We have very little downtime. So to load a magazine, you've got to take a brand new can of film stock, open it, break the seal, take it out in the dark, load it into the magazine. So a human hand touched it once. So let's say the end of the day, the end of the week, the end of the shoot, we don't use that magazine that's been sitting in the shade. We put it back in the original can. We recan it. So a recan has been touched by a human hand once. These companies will sell you recans at less than 30 cents a foot, probably 25 to 22 cents a foot. 
So you can buy recants. They've been touched by a human hand once, but you know what? I'm still not, I wouldn't be uptight about it. So recants are there. Next, ends and short ends. Every day, let's say you go through 3,280 feet. Well, that 280 feet is on a 1,000-foot reel. At the end of the day, you'll clip off 280 feet and send it to the lab to get developed in print. But you know what? You've got 720 feet left over. That's an end. Every day, you're going to accumulate an end. What we call it, if it's more than 700 feet, it's a long end. 700 to 400 feet is sort of an end. And less than 400 feet is a short end. So when you buy ends, it means it's been touched by human hands three or four times. So ends, long ends go for about 12 to 15 cents a foot. Regular ends go about 12 cents a foot. No, long ends go for 15 to 20 cents a foot. Regular ends, 12 to 15 cents a foot. And short ends, anything under 400 feet, go for 10 cents a foot. So you can accumulate 50,000 feet of 35 millimeter short ends for $5,000, 10 cents a foot. Film stock, white and gray market, buying film stock, 35 millimeter. Now let's buy what's the black market. The black market, I get a phone call about once every three weeks. I don't know who the guy is. It's always been a man so far and different each time. But the guy says, hey, I hear you shoot a lot. I got 20,000 feet of Fuji, high speed, brand new unopened, you want it? 10 cents a foot, it's always 10 cents a foot. I've never bought it because I know what it is. It's stolen film stock. By the way, the gray market is absolutely legal. Kodak, Fuji, and Agva sell to the gray market. But the black market is illegal. That's stolen film stock. I've never purchased stolen film stock. But you know what? I'm not going to be a hypocrite. I was never called on the day I was about to buy film stock. <laughs> but that film stock, it's always 10 cents a foot. You're not going to get that phone call. So, and there's no street corner phone number I can give you on how to do that because it's illegal stuff. But the point is, where did that film stock come from? Why I got to make you aware of this? You know where it came from? Your shoot. That's one of the perks that us camera people, production managers, assistant directors, camera operators, second ACs, that's one of the little perks we do on shoots. We disappear a couple of cans of film stock every day and we take it home for ourselves. And you've got to understand your film stock is gold. It's your budget. Your budget isn't $300,000. Your budget is 50,000 feet of film stock. That's your gold. Think of it that way. So what I want you to be aware of is don't support the black market. When the cinematographer says, sir, don't worry, or ma'am, don't worry, I'll take care of the film stock, uh-oh, you worry right away because you're going to lose five to 8,000 feet. And you don't even know it's been disappeared. So now you understand getting film stock, white, gray, or black market. You're going to buy high speed or regular speed, 1,000 footage, 400 footage, Kodak, Fuji, or Agfa, they're all three are wonderful and great. Buy directly from the manufacturer, get a 30% discount, or go to Studio Film and Tape and Steady Systems, get an extra 10% discount. They'll also have recants and short ends and don't support the black market. That's buying 35 millimeter, five to 15,000. Two quick questions. Do you, uh, if you shoot on Kodak, do, does your whole film have to be on Kodak? Yeah, I, I would recommend not mixing different manufacturers, Kodak, Fuji, and Agfa. But within the same manufacturer, you can mix high speed, regular speed, slow speed, medium speed. Yes, second question. Second question is, um, it looks like such a great deal to get the, the ends. Yep. Uh, do you have to have a higher level of technical expertise as a camera person to work with them? No. No. What they'll do with the ends is you'll clip off, and they clipped off 10 feet to make sure it's all printed properly. They do a scratch test that's there. The problems when you go in with ends is that you're spending a lot of time loading and downloading the camera. So that's sort of the, the balancing off factor that you'd rather not do. It's not a problem of what if it doesn't work. I've done it too many times it works. There's too much uploading and downloading time that sort of you lose time in that one. So the situation about ends and recans is why you know it's there. I have never been and ever seen a low budget independent film that comes two to three days before the shoot is over. You have run out of money. When you run out of money is when, when you know you run out of money, when you run out of film stock. Three days before the shoot's over, the DP is going to come to you. DP, director of photography, say, sir, we're out of stock. What are you going to do? You're broke. There ain't no contingency. What are you going to do? 
Well, you know, it, it's actually, you can't be a producer, this is my own opinion, unless you're bachelor, unless you have an obsessive personality disorder. If you're not in a 12-step program anywhere, forget it, you can't be a producer, whatever. But you just ran out of money, it's two days before the film's over, and you're gonna finish this film, and you got no more money, you'll sell your child. You'll hock your car. You'll do whatever to come up with another $3,000, and you know what you're gonna buy now? Recans and short ends. So when that situation occurs, and don't tell me it's not, it happens every time. Now you know where to make the phone call real quick to get the cheapest film stock in the world. A steady system, studio, film, and tape. Don't tell me it's not gonna happen. It happens every time. That's where you buy it at eight cents, 10 cents, 12 cents a foot, compared to Kodak at 35 to 45 cents a foot. So that's film stock. Next situation is lab. Let's get a lab deal. This is the end of side A.